This is the Qzone podcast, giving you an in-depth insight into the Q sports industry like never before. With an inside track into all areas of the industry, we'll be opening the door for you to learn things that before only those on the inside would get to know. I am your host, Rob Reed, and enjoy the Qzone podcast. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Qzone podcast. Now, I must start by saying I'm extremely sorry that it's been such a long time since we have released an episode. Uh, there's been a lot of reasons for that, um, a lot of which personal. There's a lot of things happen, uh, happening and going on uh, in the last sort of nine, ten months. So I know it's been a long time and uh, I wanted to actually I ha- it's been on the back of my mind to actually get some of these out to you. So uh, firstly, apologies for that. Um, I will just start by saying there's a couple of changes in terms of how we're doing things um, with the Qzone podcast. So we're going to be launching pretty much as and when because it's going to be content driven rather than trying to get loads of content to send out to you guys Um It's going to be when there's something that either you uh, on the QZone podcast Facebook group or email in in, uh, hello at inthequzone.com or something hits me, someone asks me a question in person, I will then go, that's a really good idea for the podcast, then we'll record and get it out to you. Uh, There's a few people that uh, I'm excited to get on the podcast, so we'll be doing that in the near future as well. But they'll be launched as and when we get that to you. That should give you a much better quality of podcast to listen to, uh, as well as a lot more interest. Now, a lot of the stuff, as you know from the last episodes, um, have been snooker related but not snooker specific so it's actually applicable to a lot more generalized uh, sort of not life advice but can be utilized in other areas of life um that's really what i want to go through today this is something that when you start to uh understand and get into fully you start to see it in all aspects of life and it's really it really is cha- changes the way that you do things. It changes the performance that you have, uh, just your effort, energy, mindset, all of that. This is really key. So we're going to talk about the four states, uh, mind states uh, today. And I'm not going to get too technical. I am not an expert in this, so I'll just say that. I have uh, a couple of notes based on uh, from experts that have, I've talked to about this. Um, but it's something that I've actually utilised in a lot more than snooker and um, and seen some really good results. So I wanted to share that with you. And I will give you some examples in how you can actually use that for um, for your snooker game and, and seeing a massive improvement in performance just by understanding this. And that's all it is. Um, this isn't going to be changing techniques. This isn't going to be you doing anything of any effort. This is just if you understand this, listen to this whole podcast, understand this um, at the level that I go into it, then hopefully it will inspire you when you start seeing the results to actually delve into this a little bit more. Some uh, brilliant videos on YouTube, uh, as well as some really good books and other uh, podcasts that go specifically into this. Um, Mentioning YouTube, I am going to start uploading these podcast to YouTube. So go on to YouTube and search for the Qzone podcast. Uh, They will be on there. Hit the um, subscribe, like and the bell thing, whatever that is. Uh, I'm not too sure uh, when it comes to YouTube, but that will really help me as well um, because I've put a couple of videos on there and they seem to be doing extremely well. So um, there is a a lot of people that want to see these on YouTube as well. So uh, let's get straight into it then. So the four mindsets Let's start from the top and go down. So at the top, we have a beta mindset. Uh, I'll list these out and then we'll go into them in a bit more detail. Then you've got alpha, then you've got theta, and then you've got uh, delta. So the alpha, uh, the beta mindset right at the top there, that's the conscious. The um, alpha, theta, and delta are all subconscious, okay? So... When you're in um, beta, you are 
very aware, you're alert, you've got your concentration at a maximum. This is where you're in most of the day. So this is uh, what I'm currently in now delivering uh, this podcast to you. Um, you might not be, uh, it depends how avidly you are there sitting taking notes and everything, but you're probably, whilst listening to this, probably in, in an alpha mindset because um, when you're absorbing content, uh, alpha is the mindset that you're naturally put into. So when you're watching TV, for example, you're naturally put into alpha. So alpha is for uh, creativity, as I say, absorbing information. And um, this is where you'll get your inspiration, your ideas from mainly. So you you feel conscious, but those when some of those sort of thoughts pop into your head and, and have those ideas, because what you're doing is you're, and I'm gonna talk about thoughts per minute, but you're actually jumping from quantity to quality thoughts. And that's where you have some of your best uh, ideas. So I, I mentioned to one of my students the other day that I get a lot of my um, really creative ideas for um, developing business or anything like that. Some of my best ideas come from when I'm in a alpha slash theta mindset, um, mainly alpha mindset. And the thing that puts me into an alpha mindset um, and we'll talk about this in a second, is driving whilst listening to the self-titled Blink 182 album because I've heard it so many times that I just switch off to it. And I could have listened to the album twice, three times on repeat and not realised that I have because I, my, my mind has actually thought about this other idea and, and it's just developing this idea in my head. That's uh, a lot of the mindset. So, And by the way, this is, we're into subconscious with Alpha. So if you've ever driven... Um, or even been driven, but if you've ever driven the car and you've gone, I don't know where the last 10 minutes has gone, and I'm worried because I'm surprised I haven't crashed, you're fully capable of doing everything you're doing, but you might not remember it uh, because you're in that creativity mindset in alpha, which is a subconscious state of mind. Now, if we go down one further from that, and, and by the way, these levels are based on the sort of like electro pulses of activity in your uh, in your brain, uh, sort of the brain waves uh, ultimately. And I'm, I've got the figures down here, but I'm, I'm not going to go into it um, because all you need to know is you're going down in this brain way of activity and whilst you're going through these mind states, okay? So going down even further, really relaxed is theta. Now I say really relaxed, because this is where you're uh, into your reprogramming of the mind, and we'll talk about this in a bit, but uh, reprogramming is key. This is where um, hypnosis will put you in, and uh, this is what um, deep meditation will do. Uh, will get you just to slow down when you're just trying to have very few, few thoughts, and you're in that, um, that memory stage. So this is where all your memories are housed, okay? Then the fourth level, at, right at the bottom, the delta mindset, and that is where you're uh, in sleep, essentially. So this is the key um, brainwave activity for healing, okay? Now this is of mental and physical healing, so when you're feeling ill, when you just wanna sleep, that's because your body's saying, you need to be in delta so we can heal you. You don't really get healing in theta, alpha, or beta, okay? Um, so this is your, your deep sleep, which is why people talk about having lots of sleep. Actually, it's not quantity of sleep, it's quality of sleep. And quality of sleep comes from deep sleep and REM, okay? REM heals the mind, deep sleep heals the body. Um, so if you do track your sleep, you've got um, an extremely smart watch, um, like a, a Garmin or something that will track which sleep stage you're in. You can actually track that. So. Um, you can actually then find optimum um, quantity of sleep and times for sleep. So, for example, deep sleep, uh, I got told deep sleep generally is between 10 and 2. Um, you don't tend to find deep sleep actually come into your uh, your sleep pattern after 2 o'clock, generally because, you know, people that have got themselves on shift patterns or, or, or night shifts or something like that, obviously that changes. So, need the coffee as well. Um, so, um, why are they important in, uh, in general life? Now, when you're, let's, let's talk about general life and let's, let's then put that into a sneaker context. So when you're looking at general life, um, you are in alpha most of the time. Okay. And when you're, if you've ever been in a state where you've tried to remember someone's name or a telephone number or your pin number 
for example? How many times have you been, oh, I need to, oh, not so much now with contactless, but I, I need to remember my PIN, and then you're really trying to focus really hard to remember that in alpha, and you just can't, you can't remember it. And then later on, either just before you go to bed uh, or when you're watching the TV or you're listening to someone fairly boring, um, hopefully not this podcast, but w- when you're naturally put into that um, mind, different mind states, and this will put you into uh, a different mind state anyway, um, you can then instantly remember something. Oh, I was forgot to do this, I was meant to do this, or, oh, that's my PIN number, that's the name of that person, that's the phone number I wanted. That's because you're actually getting different thoughts per minute. Um, as the thoughts per minute changes, so you're getting better quality of thought and not quantity of thought, um, but but also you're going into the the creativity or even lower into the where the memories are housed. So when you're trying to think, it's actually the worst thing to do. Um, you actually need to relax and try not to think about it and, and try and um, just get yourself in a different mind state. Um, when you're looking at this in a snooker context, how many times have you really focused and missed an easy shot? Or uh, you've thought really through and through about what shot you want to play, but actually um, it just goes wrong or because your technique goes wrong because you're focusing on that part of the technique or... Um, any of that, it's or you're there and you're trying to think of the rule and you know the rules, but someone asks you and you're trying to actively think of it and you now question yourself because you can't think of it or any host of examples. Okay, now m- missing the missing the easy shot is is one of the um, one of the most common. Um, so understanding these mindsets is a big thing. Um, which is why some days you find you're better at snooker than others. Now, I'll, I, I get this all the time. Um, people come up to me and say, oh, why is it that I'll take two weeks off of playing, come back and I'm much better? I should take more breaks. Well, in a way, yes, you should take more breaks, but what's that doing to your mind state? Actually, what you're doing is you're becoming a lot more relaxed when you're pl- getting back to playing, and when you're a lot more relaxed, you play perform better. Um, so... Ultimately, yes, you should take more breaks, but not the two-week gaps because that's ridiculous if you took that all the time. Professionals don't take that. Take it every now and again. Um, But you shouldn't take two-week breaks. You should be able to, in that practice session at the club or on your table, be able to break up the practice session so that you're taking breaks um, to put yourself into those different mindsets. So it's important to understand which mindset you're in, okay? Now, thoughts per minute is a key thing. It's quantity over quality, quality over quantity, okay? Um, But we tend to think of quantity quite a lot. So, uh, and I've got the figures here um, because I think it is important. So when you're in beta and you're really trying to, really actively thinking, um, in a time normally of stress, so that's when you're at the at the till when you with your 130 pounds tesco shop or you know food shop and um you haven't to put your pin number in and you've got seven people behind you and it's six o'clock so it's really busy and you'll get your pin wrong that stress level goes right up you're now fully in beta and you're really trying to think of your pin number you're getting about 60 thoughts per minute That's one a second. That's a lot of thoughts. And a lot of those aren't what you need, what you want. And they could be... uh, Thoughts are thoughts, right? They're not facts. They're not memories. They're they're just thoughts. So every combination of pin number is going through your head of what it could be. And then you you know there's a three in there, but you don't know, is there two threes or is it two zeros? Or So all of these thoughts are going through your head. So when you become more relaxed, the, the quantity of thoughts goes down uh, the more relaxed you are. So when you're, uh, the, the average thoughts, by the way, is about 30 per minute. Uh, if you get more relaxed than that, you're looking at 15. If you're extremely relaxed, you're looking at 10 thoughts per minute. And then obviously you've got zero, which is when you're in, um, uh, in sleep or deep meditation, when you're trying to have a minimal thoughts at all. Um, 
but the quality goes up, which is why when I'm relaxed and I've got 10, uh, 15, say, thoughts per minute, when I'm uh, in the car driving down a road that I've driven thousands of times and I'm listening to music that I've listened to thousands of times and I'm really relaxed, um, I'm having better quality thoughts which is why creativity goes up. So that's why the alpha uh, is the creative mode, the uh, theta is the uh, where the memory bank is, so the actual quality goes up. Um, so identifying when you're in each one. Now, understand this, you can't jump between them. You have to transition through them. So if you're in, uh, and this is why when people say, oh, don't go on your phones just before you go to bed, that's because you're in alpha, uh, you're in beta or alpha. Now, to go to sleep, you want to be in delta. So you need to transition through theta uh, into delta. Now, if you're in, let's say, beta, which is your conscious fully aware, you need to go through the, the three subconsciouses down to delta. So you need to go through the alpha, th through theta, down to delta. And that, that, that's a transition. That takes time, so to unwind. Um, and then when you wake up, you're going to transition through uh, from data, uh, delta through theta, uh, alpha, up to beta. So understanding that on the practice table, when you start to not focus, um, allow yourself to not focus. When you want to um, allow yourself the creativity when you're looking at getting out of uh, a difficult shot or trying to put someone into a difficult shot and you need the creativity, stop trying to concentrate and focus. Try and just give yourself that, um, that time to relax. So understand what mindset you're in and when you best need it. Now, theta and delta, probably not good for um, your snooker game. Um, unless you're just going to lie there horizontally while someone else is clearing up. But uh, definitely the switch between uh, alpha and beta are going to be key, and knowing how to use those is going to rapidly improve your game. Um, now, how do you affect that change? So knowing that those, those mind states are... those mind states and what you can do with them is a huge start. Um, knowing that if you're high stress and you're alpha and you actually want to be in, uh, sorry, in beta and you'll want to be in alpha, that is the hardest thing to do, under, is realising it, understanding it. Um, then putting yourself into that my state to, by relaxing. A lot of people, it's like when you say to someone, calm down when they're angry. When does that ever work? That does not work. People need to stop doing this. Um, calm down. Getting, so telling yourself to calm down and relax is not gonna, and it's not gonna work. So you, what, the, what speaks to the subconscious mind m uh, most is imagery um, and emotion. Now, emotion is driven by imagery quite a lot, which is why when you've got your um, favorite smell or favorite food, uh, the taste of it, smell or anything like that, um, or if you've cut yourself with a knife and you hold a knife uh, and you instantly get that emotion. Now, that, that's driven by senses. Now, imagery triggers a lot of those senses and those emotions. So you've got to put those images into your mind uh, to, to train it. So when you're, and this is a big thing as part of the shot routine, uh, pre-shot routine, is just imagining how the shot will play out and how that will feel. Because what you're doing is, you know, this whole law of attraction stuff works because it's putting yourself into a different mind state to go out there and get it, be creative and actually do that and deliver by being relaxed and not having the stressed high level thoughts per minute. So imagining the shot before you get down and play it, imagining that it's gonna go exactly how you want, um, you will see the shot. now. This is where hindsight's fantastic. Hindsight works because you've you've seen it and you've gone, oh, that was never going to work. Well, if you visualise it and see it and then you think, oh, that's, that's clearly made up. What's just happened there? In my head, I've just gone into some sort of green screen thing. Then... Um, then you, you can then change your shot. But if you imagine it and it works, you're putting yourself uh, into that emotive state which gets your mindset uh, to where you want it to be. 
So knowing that, and this is why people have vision boards, write goals. You want your goal writing. So when you're writing your goals, you want to be an alpha. The reason you want to be an alpha, fairly obviously, that's the most uh, creative. That's when you're, uh, you get your best ideas. That's when you're, you get inspired. Um, so you want that to be when you're goal, goal setting. Now, if you go down one into theta, now, by the way, theta happens twice guaranteed each day. You can put yourself into it, as we talked about. Very few people do, people that meditate do. Um, but every single person goes into theta twice a day. Fairly simply, when you wake up from delta and when you're going to sleep into delta. So if you want to reprogram your mind, then do it in theta when you're going to sleep or waking up. Now, whether that's having an audio program on um, as you're going to sleep um, or as you're waking up, um, allow yourself to be in that state. So when you wake up, the reason why it's said, and, and I actively try and avoid this by having my phone in a different room, as soon as you wake up, don't look at your phone. So don't have your alarm on your phone, for example, um, because you're getting out of theta, going into alpha, or even beta. Um, and actually, that's a really nice transition to be in. It's a really nice state of mind to be in. Uh, and that's the state where you're really quite still. Um, you feel like you're, you, you know, you could quite easily go back to sleep. Um, so don't have your alarm on your phone. If you do, get a natural alarm clock. Uh, and just try and avoid that because you, what you want to be in is you want to be in that really nice state of mind because that's just really relaxing and it sets you up for the day and you can happily allow your body to transition instead of forcing it to transition. Um, and if you're there twice a day, then, you know, if, if, as soon as you get up, read a, uh, read a bit of a book, which is why um, a lot of people say that studying first thing in the morning or, or going first, last thing at night, um, studying, reading, you retain more information because the state of mind you're in, okay? Um, so there's quite a lot of information there to take in, but this isn't just applicable for snooker, as I said, this is applicable for everything. Um, uh, the, the thing that I try and get all of my students to do is to not, uh, to, to focus on one thing, because what you're doing is, if you try and focus, excuse me, on everything, you're putting yourself into that uh, beta um, state of high stress, lots of qu quantity thoughts per minute, rather than quality uh, thoughts per minute. Um, so get, get yourself to concentrate on one thing. So if you're concentrating on delivering the cue straight, don't care about the pot. Don't care about everything else. Don't care about if it's got side spin on it or anything else, unless that's because you're not delivering it straight. Just concentrate on every single thing. So if you're going to concentrate on stance, don't even care about you know, where you are on the ball or if you deliver the cue straight. Don't worry about that because you can focus on that later because you, when you focus on something uh, and through repetitions, as I said in a previous podcast, uh, you create the synapse so that that's natural, which is why you can tie your shoelaces without even thinking, which is why, you know, when you've driven for years, you can drive a car without even thinking or realising how you got from A to B. Um, so you're doing that. So focus on one thing each at a time. Um, so I, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wrap it up, but um, I just want to sort of let you know about a few things that, that I find really exciting. Um, and one of which, as you know, um, Qzone's brought out a, a product called the Ghost Ball Potting Aid. So if you know the Ghost Ball theory, um, great. If you don't, don't really worry about it at the moment. But ultimately, it's the theory of how, uh, how angles work and how you put balls at a very basic surface level, okay? There's, it goes a lot deeper into that. Um, so we've spent all of last year, we've basically, we've literally got a few left. We've sold out of the Ghost Ball Potting Aid, which visually shows you the, uh, the angle. So this is what I'm talking about, focus, and it allows you to put yourself in these different mind states because you don't have to think about certain things. Um, you're just focusing on one thing or another, and actually it allows you to better your game because subconsciously it's creating that synapse and training your mind um, to, to learn things because you're absorbing the information. Um, well, I'm extremely excited to say that not only have we got these for snooker and billiards, uh, eight ball and also nine ball pool now. Um, so, and basically it's the only usable tool 
that you can um, put on the table and because of the way it's made, what it's made with, uh, by the way, extremely long lasting. I've had the same one for the last couple of years that I've used with all my students and demonstrate, uh, demoed with, and it, it's wipeable clean. Um, if you're not watching on YouTube, um, that noise is me flicking one of these uh, uh, podcast uh, potting aids. Um, and extremely durable, but you can actually play with it on the table. Now, the importance of that is um, you're creating that synapse and um, you're in that different state of mind whilst using this. Um, so that's a very simple way, just as an example of another way you can put yourself into that. Um, if you wanted one of these for snooker, pool, um, nine ball, eight ball, um, as I say, they're um, now available on inthequzone.com forward slash potting aid. Um, but if you've got any questions, look, join the Facebook group, um, which is the QZone podcast. Just type in the search bar. Um, have a look on YouTube because, as I said, you know th these are going to go on YouTube. Uh, comment on um, things that you want to hear about, you want to see. There's going to be some that I'm going to do in the office like I am now. There's going to be some that I'm actually going to look at doing on the um, on the snooker table um, whilst trying to get some interviews um, through to you guys as well. So that'll be really exciting. Some of the old ones, I did actually film parts of that. So it might be a little bit broken, but I'm definitely gonna put some things up on YouTube um, where you can actually see me talking to people like um, Jason Francis, Dennis Taylor, uh, Rob Walker, um, and, and the, the podcast that I've done before. So keep, a, keep an eye out for those. It's gonna be really exciting. And um, I look forward to the next session talking about good stuff. But no, seriously, thanks for listening and I'll catch you next time. Goodbye.